Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And in this video short, we're going to be talking about using somatic cell count trends to evaluate environmental mastitis problems. Now to do this, you need monthly somatic cell count values for all the cows in the herd uh, every month. And we need to have the ability to be able to summarize those by stage of lactation, and by parity group. So for example, lactation one, lactation two, and lactation three plus. Now the concept be behind using somatic cell count values to identify that there's an environmental mastitis problem in the herd is simply that environmental mastitis is caused by opportunistic pathogens that live in the environment of the cows. And cows get infected when the exposure overwhelms the ability of the teat and the cow to withstand infection. So these bacteria aren't normally adapted to living for a long time in the udder of the cow. So what we tend to see is the most susceptible cows develop infections, but they also have a high rate of spontaneous cures. So we tend to see somatic cell cones go up and then come down without any intervention at all. So in order to evaluate these environmental infections, we'll think about who are the most susceptible cows in the herd. And if we really think about that, we know it's typically the cows in early lactation and often the younger cows as well. Now one tricky thing about environmental mastitis problems is even herds that have relatively low somatic cell counts may have a problem with environmental mastitis. In this uh, graph, I'm showing you data from a herd where the overall bulk tank somatic cell count is 175,000 cells per mL. And you can see this data is summarized for first lactation, second lactation, and third lactation um, cows by different stages of lactation. If you look at this data, you'll see that for all three parity groups, the trend is the same the cell counts are highest in the stage of lactation, earliest in lactation, when they're most susceptible and least able to resist infection. So you see for all three of those parity groups, cell count is highest at one to 40 days in milk. That's a good indication that you need to go in and look at the environmental management of those animals in that stage um, or that period of their lives. Now another interesting way that we can summarize somatic cell count data to get some ideas about um, is environmental mastitis a problem or are we dealing with contagious mastitis is to create what we call two by two tables. Now this is simply done for animals that have two consecutive months of tests. So it's not all the animals in the herd, only the animals that have two consecutive months of individual somatic cell count values can, can be included in this graph. And making these graphs are very simple. We simply take, we compare for the herd the somatic cell count of each animal last month as compared to this month. So there's really four different categories that animals can fall into. One category, shown in green in our chart, is cows that had a low somatic cell count last month and a low somatic cell count this month. By low, we're referring to cows that are less than 200,000 cells per mL for both months, which is also equivalent to a linear score of less than four. That group of animals is healthy, and we'd like most animals to be in that group. You can see in this herd, most are. The second category would be cows that had a cell count above our threshold of 200,000, or linear score four, last month and this month. Those animals are chronic, and we'd like there to be the least amount of those in our herds. You can see them there in the red box in our graph. And um, those are the animals that we'll discuss in managing chronic cows in our next video series. And then we've got two other categories. We've got the cows that were low last month, but went above our threshold this month. Those animals are what we would consider to be our new subclinical infections. And then we've got the reverse of that, animals that were high last month and have gone low this month. Those would be spontaneous cures, cows that their cell count has dropped 
without any intervention. A hallmark of a herd with an environmental mastitis problem is just like you're seeing in this graph. Many, many new infections and spontaneous cures because these pathogens aren't adapted to living in the udder of the cow when they get in. Many of them cause short-term infections which are spontaneously cured. When we see these trends of environmental mastitis, it tells us we need to go look at the environment that those cows are in. Now in our next video short, we'll be discussing using somatic cell counts to manage chronic cows. Thank you.